The Michigan Data Science Team is a student-run organization at the University of Michigan that participates in online prediction challenges and performs data consulting services for good causes in and around the university area. Beginning in early 2011, the state of Michigan took over the city of Flint's budget amidst a financial state of emergency. In April 2014, city managers chose to switch away from the Detroit water system, sourced from Lake Huron, to Flint's reserve water system, sourced from the Flint River, as part of a series of cost-cutting measures. Despite warnings from Virginia Tech researcher Mark Edwards and Dr. Hannah Atisha of Hurley Medical Center in Flint, who both published studies in September of 2015 documenting evidence of widespread lead contamination in the Flint water system, it was not until October 16, 2015 that the city of Flint returned to using the Detroit water system. As a result of actions on the part of Michigan DEQ, the EPA, and the governor's office, the city of Flint was exposed to a lead contamination event beginning in April of 2014, which continues to affect its residents. Indeed, today, Flint still does not have clean drinking water. Flint faces an incredible challenge. Identify the residents who are at the greatest risk and aid them in the most efficient way possible given their resource constraints. In an effort to be as transparent as possible about the state of its water, the city of Flint publishes the data from both residential and sentinel water testing programs. The sentinel program consists of a set of homes selected by the DEQ to serve as a representative sample, while the residential program is a free and voluntary service in which residents can collect and submit a sample of their water for analysis. In our analysis, we join this lead testing data with the publicly available Census and American Community Survey data to provide demographic information, as well as parcel data, which provides information on individual properties, such as the year built and property value. Using this data, we trained a predictive model to classify homes as dangerous according to the standard EPA action level of 15 parts per billion of lead. This allows us to identify the properties at greatest risk to lead exposure and prioritize them in the ongoing service line replacement effort. Given the variety of data we utilized in our model, we were able to investigate the relationship between lead testing results and many demographic and property-specific variables. Through our analysis, we found that the most predictive features for lead contamination were the age of the property and home value. Specifically, homes built in the 1940s through the 1950s are at much greater risk of lead contamination. In addition to conducting our own analysis, MDST organized a predictive modeling competition through Kaggling Class with 150 students at the University of Michigan to encourage research and raise awareness around Flint. Through this competition, we were able to see many different approaches to the problem and compare performance of a variety of models with a common benchmark testing set. But analysis is only half the battle. Communicating results is of the utmost importance in data science, and the Flint water crisis is no exception. In a collaboration between Google and the University of Michigan Ann Arbor and Flint campuses, we implemented a web application which displays residential water test drop-off locations, blood testing locations, and distribution centers for free bottled water and water filters. Additionally, the application also displays the latest water testing data for any home which has been subject to a water test, and for those which have not undergone a test, the website uses our predictive model to estimate lead contamination risk for those properties, encouraging the property owner to submit a test if they have not done so. We hope that these experiments and projects will serve as a model for potential collaboration between citizen data scientists and civil servants moving forward. And we thank the city of Flint and its officials for their transparency and for their ongoing willingness to support us in our analysis of the Flint water crisis.